Today, local officials in South Carolina say they are still investigating what caused last night's fire at the Mount Zion African Methodist Episcopal Church in, Greens in Greeleyville, the same church that was burned to the ground 20 years ago by the KKK. We don't know what happened, what started the fire. We're going to yield that to uh, SLED and all the other law enforcement officials to uh, figure out what happened out there. But uh, we just say right now that we're going to continue to pray for that church. What we do know is the fire was the seventh at a predominantly black church across five southern states in just the last two weeks. And since Dylan Roof gunned down nine people at a Charleston church June 17th. Today, the church's pastor told NBC that whatever the cause, it was time to move forward while exhibiting the same kind of compassion seen in the aftermath of that mass murder. I don't know what happened here, whatever happened here, sooner or later will be revealed when these folks do their job and we'll have to move forward with whatever hand uh, we're dealt. If someone did something like that, I pray for them. I leave them in God's hands. We do know last night's fire started around 8.30 p.m., just hours after the NAACP warned black churches to take all necessary precautions given recent events. Now, we're joined by MSNBC national correspondent Joy Reid, South Carolina State Representative Caesar McKnight, and professor at Georgetown University and MSNBC political analyst Michael Eric Dyson. Uh, Joy, just in terms of the facts and what's known, what is the latest right now? Uh, well, Ari, I can tell you that I spoke with the local fire chief here who said that one of the reasons that it is such slow going trying to determine the cause of this fire is because the fire collapsed the roof of the structure, which makes investigating it much more difficult because the amount of debris that is now filling uh, the space where the church was. Uh, so one of that, that is one of the issues, of course. Uh, and then, of course, there is the anxiety that you hear coming from people who gathered here to, to look at this, this church or to take pictures of it who are saying, how can it be a coincidence seven church fires uh, in as many days, but officials, including federal officials that I've spoken with, being very cautious, saying there's nothing overtly linking any of these cases. Um, of course, it is unusual, as one ATF official told our colleagues at NBC News. Certainly not the norm was the phrase that was used to have this many church fires in this shorter period of time. But here, the investigation still ongoing. There were lightning strikes uh, in this area on Tuesday night, but Ari, uh, the fire official I spoke with, did note that no other structures burned that night. There were no other 911 hmm. calls of fires, just this church. And, and Representative McKnight, what is the approach here? Because there is a line between vigilance, something we've heard from the authorities and some of these African American groups, a vigilance about the threat, and making assumptions, which at this point in this incident, we don't have uh, the knowledge or the facts yet that would confirm exactly how this fire started. Well, I think it's incumbent upon local churches to be vigilant, given the climate that we find ourselves in, ourselves in uh, with seven church fires in as many as two weeks. It's not, uh, it's not paranoia to be vigilant because, unfortunately, we have a history in this region in, in the South of black churches being targeted because they are the center of the communities uh, for African Americans and it's where the political power, the spiritual power, and just the power of the community lies for many African Americans. Yeah, you say that and that is of course something that the president spoke directly to in that uh, I think very moving eulogy that so many Americans saw late last week. Uh, on this issue, Professor Dice and I want to play a little more uh, from the Greeleyville mayor, Jesse Parker, talking about the point uh, that Representative McKnight just made, the centrality of the African-American church. Let's play that. The church is pretty much the cornerstone of all the different communities over here. I mean, everything involves around the church. This is a Christian community. And uh, so just to sit and see that happening is really devastating. It hurts everybody. Your thoughts, Professor Dyson? Well, the black church is the center of so many communities and therefore a symbol of not only spiritual renewal and sanctuary, but also political progress. So one of the reasons these churches are magnets for such terror and hate is because they have put forth leadership to quell the rise of white terror, as well as white supremacy, as well as economic inequality and social injustice broadly. Many of the leaders of African-American communities have come from or through the church, and as a result of that, uh, the spiritual and political uh, elements together in tandem make them a, 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 a quite an attraction and an appeal for those who are looking for ready symbols um, to light 
they are fires of disgust or resentment of African American communities. Well, and Professor, elaborate on that because one of the interesting points when we look at the uh, leadership side, the political side, is that uh, President Obama was one of the first sort of most prominent African American leaders who didn't come directly out of the clergy, uh, and right. yet he has been emphasizing this so much as the nation's been been mourning these terrible attacks in the in the context of the mass murder and some of not this one that we're reporting on today, but some of these arsons. Absolutely right. It's a great point, Ari. Uh, when you think about Henry Highland Garnett, you think about Frederick Douglass, 19th century figures, 20th century, you think about, you know, everybody from Bill Gray to Reverend Jesse Jackson, Reverend Al Sharpton, Reverend Emmanuel Cleaver, Reverend Andrew Young, um, on and on and on. When you think about Reverend Prathia Hall or Reverend Carolyn Knight, uh, Bishop Vashti McKenzie, these are tremendous figures who have come from our community, uh, many of them political figures who have been rooted in and supported by the African-American church, and the church has been a center of education, of social involvement, of political engagement, and as a result of that, an easy target uh, for those who would do the community harm. And Joy, going back to you, looking forward tonight, we're told there's a community meeting. Uh, we understand, of course, everyone has been following it there locally. What else happens uh, going forward? Well, I can tell you, Ari, that uh, the churches in this community are definitely looking toward their security. Whatever the outcome of the investigation uh, of what happened here at Mount Zion, a lot of people are very much on edge. Uh, the churches here, obviously around the country, feeling very nervous, feeling targeted. But again, um, a lot of actual support for what's happening in terms of the investigation. People being cautiously optimistic, as one person told me, uh, they're hoping that this investigation finds out that it was due to lightning. Uh, and not due to hate. And I think that you're seeing a lot of that kind of cautious optimism uh, here in South Carolina, Ari. All right, Joy Reid, thank you for your reporting from the field. Representative Cesar McKnight and Michael Eric Dyson as well, thank you for your thoughts. We will stay on this story with updates. Thank you all.